Welcome everybody to another glorious day on the Glorious Sunrise podcast. We are having, we're on, wow, episode three. We have made it to episode three of the Glorious Sunrise podcast. This has been an absolute blast so far. Today we are talking the most surprising cards from Streets of New Capenna. This could be for a, ver a variety of reasons, whether they're uh, overly competitive and we didn't expect it. They could be really bad and we thought they'd be good or they're just really fun to play, whatever it might be. Uh, but we each picked our top three and we're going to be going through those. But first, I have to ask, how you doing, Country Fried? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm stoked to get into this one because I think it's a fun one. Yeah, it's been interesting, is not it? Yeah, it, it really has. Uh, before we do jump into the list, I have to have to sh uh, do the little the shameless plug stuff uh <laughs> one thing to note if you're watching on youtube uh you can listen and follow subscribe to the podcast on spotify as well as the podcast app highly encourage you guys do so if you happen to be listening over on one of those you can jump join us on youtube and see our beautiful smiling faces as we go through these episodes uh we really do have a good time on this podcast it's an absolute blast and so yeah dude this is this has been a great time yeah it has man it's really fun it really is and it you know like the rollout with streets for getting to actually tackle some of this stuff yeah. right off the bat that you may not tackle in a video when you're doing the brews and stuff like that so um this is definitely an inter interesting way to dive into this type of material and then plus the podcast itself who knows where it's going to go yeah for sure i think you know what's great about a podcast is it's a great forum for us to chat and just talk our heads off about really fine details of every little detail of a new set or of a deck or whatever. Um, I think the last one was a great example of that because we went into some detail about those decks. Uh, oh, yeah, and, and I blew it. I blew it. You got to throw yourself out there, and it may <laughs> not even be right, man. Uh, Just Guy Combo, I haven't even seen it. I tried but it. <laughs> I know. I saw, I saw that. <laughs> but uh it but i don't know i me. think <laughs> i know i feel so bad man I, I can't understand how you have eight unexpected windfalls and only drew one but I know, it was insane. but uh i think as we see the tournaments roll out um i think everybody's trying new stuff right now yeah and it's a lot of fun and of course just the brewer even in the competitive side of uh, magic the brewer at heart um they're all trying the new stuff to see what the synergies are i think we still have a week or two before the tournaments start rolling out and we yeah. start seeing a meta form oh i think you're definitely right and honestly um and this is something we've hinted at before you know as this is a three color quote unquote format where you've got a lot of three color synergies that are on the table mm -hmm. now with the land uh, flexibility and and those slots that we have, especially with the the triumphs, um, you know, you get a lot more opportunity for different archetypes, but also just different versions of the same deck. Um, we'll talk about that later on, because there's one card in particular on my list where that really, really has fallen into uh, fruition. And so we'll kind of talk about that as we go through. But all in all, guys, Streets of New Capenna has been an absolute blast. I've loved it. Oh, yeah. Um, I've had some really great decks. I've had some not so great decks. But all in all, it's been a blast. Uh, really excited to talk about some of these cards. But we are going to talk about an honorable mention uh, first and foremost. Because uh, this is a card that I, I know when I first looked at the set, I was like, ooh, this has great potential. Like, it's a really fun card. <laughs> but... I didn't realize how much potential. <laughs> um, guys, we're talking Devilish Valet, uh, which is a little 1-3 for 2 and a red. Uh, it does have Trample and Haste, as well as a uh, Alliance ability. So whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you double its power until the end of the turn. I thought this would be good, but I didn't think it would be like 8,000 points of damage good. And that happened to me. So... <laughs> It's insane, dude. Like, pick, uh, throw this with a scoot swarm, and all of a sudden you've got way too much power for one creature. Yeah, he gets big really fast, and scoot swarm really does it with him. Um, there's some other cards that synergize really well with him, which I one of one of my picks ends up being that. So I'm gonna hold off, kind of diving into that. But sure. yeah, man, he gets absolutely out of control. And I mean, with the with the um, like storm the festival and him fitting right in Jun colors, real easy. Um, you can just drop some creatures in really fast and make tokens. Or if you hit a chariot with two cats, then you yeah. know. It's 
things, he's automatically up to a 4-3. If you got another creature that came in, now he's an 8-3. And, uh, yeah, man, he just gets way out of control really fast. I he like him. <laughs> certainly does. And, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, you've got a card later on on the list that really works well with him. So we'll we'll kind of not not gloss over him but we won't stay too long on the the devilish valet but all in all this card is just a blast to play with it's one of those like really fun builds i'll be honest i mean the the downfall of the card is it is just a creature so it's not that yeah. difficult to remove but there are a lot of decks right now that are running more sweeper heavy than spot removal heavy at least in my experience and so I mean, if they don't have an instant speed way to deal with it, it's pretty difficult, and I, you can just win an easy game off of it. So, an absolute blast of a card. Highly recommend if you guys have not played with it. Uh, totally, totally check that card out. It's amazing. Yep. He's a ton of fun, man. He yeah, has dude. a ton of fun. He's, he's just chaos and mayhem and a creature. Yeah, for sure. I love it. For sure. He's a little devil. Uh, <laughs> well, let's go into it. Again, guys, we've each picked our top three here. Uh, this is not an exclusive list, I will say. There have been a number of cards that have really popped up for me, uh, but I did want to pick a few that really kind of sh sh shined above the rest. Uh, and so I'm going to start actually at the bottom of my list with Topiary Stomper, uh, which is an interesting card in my opinion. So it's a 4-4 four, four for one and two green. Uh, plant dinosaur, mm -hmm. which let me just be clear is probably one of the cooler creature types, um, but does have vigilance. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then you shuffle. Uh, it can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands. And that for me was the really big factor that kind of made me not gloss over the card completely, but feel like, okay, there's a limit to how good this card can be because yes it gets you a it's a creature it's uh land f uh, fixing on a creature which is super super good and it's just good value it's a four four vigilance for three so I'm, in my head all those things were like wow this card's amazing and then i read that last line and i was like but it's completely useless for so long i have found that is not the case <laughs> um i have played multiple decks with this this little guy and may i just say he is amazing a lot of times he'll eat a removal spell before he can even attack, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, and it's just like, I, I think a lot of decks right now, at least in my experience, again, are not necessarily focused on big, crazy stuff. Now we're starting to get there because we are starting to get ramp decks, but this works in the ramp decks, so it's great. And like, that, it's it works so well every single time. And if you need a land, it gets you the land you need. Like... It just does everything that you want in a green ramp style deck. And it took me a little bit longer to realize it solely because of that last line of text. Yeah, no, man, I love it. Look, if it wasn't, if it didn't say basic land and it just said land, this yeah. would be an every deck, every deck, oh, yeah, every yeah. deck would be playing this card. 100%. Uh, that's the only, and that and the fact that it can't attack or block unless yeah. you get seven or more lands in play. That's the only constraints on it that, that have people resisting putting it in decks. But if you haven't used it and you're trying to mana fix or if you're trying to go into your bigger spells, like if you're wanting to play your Titan of Industries or your Storm the Festivals really quick or even mm -hmm. get to a Ren and Seven. Look, I, I liked it when it came out, man. I yeah. did. I, I saw people getting down. I actually got into a little, not, and I wasn't even a spat. I made yeah. a comment because somebody was uh, bagging on the card pretty bad. And I was like, look, a 4-4 four, four for 3. Yeah, You're dropping it in. It's got vigilance. When you get to 7 or more lands, it can attack or block. It's probably going to eat removal. Yeah. And I mean, your experienced players will wait. Your inexperienced players are just not even going to read the full text. Yeah possibly yeah. um and then of course i mean i know we're going into streets of new capenna but this dude crews your chariot so yes. now your chariot is a legit eight eight yes going in with cats yes for See, four and that's one of those synergistic pieces that i i wanted to touch on so i'm really glad that you brought it up is that vehicles are so i mean in, in particular the chariot is obviously kind of at the top of the vehicles list in my mind um but rank reckoner bank busters there like there are other options um mm -hmm. all of them can still be crewed by this as soon as it hits the field and so um and not only that but it has vigilance so you can do some wick wacky things with it but all in all, it just it worked so much better in practice than I was initially anticipating. And with those synergies, with the fact that you can pull those basic lands and not to mention, too, you know, a lot of decks are running Field of Ruin right now because we've got so mm -hmm. many man lands and things like that. 
uh, with Field of Ruin, you always have to run basic lands because you need to be able to pull out a basic land. And so right. it's like, well, you're already running basics anyway. Why wouldn't you have another way to get them out? But it's a more proactive way where you also get the creature. You can get it without sacrificing a land. Like, it just feels so good every time you play it. And it's a plant dinosaur. So, I mean. Yeah, and he's a <laughs> jank magnet for me, man. Because yeah. this thing with teleportation circle thins out your deck so fast. Oh, it's absolutely so ridiculous. Man. Yes, so, so sick. Um, Yeah, I've used him in a couple of ramp decks. I'm actually working on one. As we're recording this, I built one this morning that's just a Simic ramp deck um, mm -hmm. that I'm going to be running. I got to fine tune it a little bit, but uh, Simic ramp is very, very good right now. And a lot of it is on the back of Topiary Stomper because it works so well with a lot of synergies. Works great with Landfall as well. I mean, you know, <clears throat> and talking with the Asika's Chariot, it's also great with things like Scoot Swarm and Lotus Cobra and yeah. things that'll generate extra value just from the land drop um and it's efficient so you can play that and another spell usually in the same turn if you need to so it works really really well it's a great little green ramper i love this thing yeah man i like it i think if it's specifically in a simic package really really easy because i mean you go right into a quandrix cultivator after this or you go into a eureka moment yeah. or i mean depending on how you build your simic and then you get you know you got to open fields for comas and yeah. titan of industry and just the really big stuff and it could get out of control i mean i like it even helping out alvinwald oddity get mm -hmm. it's a uh, little kicker because the oddity is great. It's a four, 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 four. You really want to flip that thing. If you've ever, yeah. if you've never flipped an oddity, do it. Yes. <laughs> mint, mint. Yeah, dude, it's so, <laughs> so sick. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I really, really love it. It's a great piece of, uh, of ramp for those decks. So I'm yeah. stoked for it. I liked it. I yeah, liked dude. it when I saw it. I still like it, man. It was a great pick. It was a three star for me when I initially saw it. It's like a four, four and a half for me now. Out of oh yeah, he's going to be around. Yeah. He's going to be around he's unless so they good. unless unless they put green with a better ramp spell. He's going to be around. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's go to the first one on your list. What you got? All right. So mine is one that I haven't even played with, but uh, I can't make a video or content in the past two days without seeing this thing pop up all over the place. <laughs> That is Illuminator Virtuoso. It is one colorless, one white. It's a 1-1 one, one human rogue, double strike. And then whenever Illuminator Virtuoso becomes the target of a spell uh, you control, it connives where you draw a card, then you discard a card. And if you discard a non-land card, then you put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Uh, look, man, with the, with the connive ability and the double strike, this thing can get out of control really well, uh, really fast. Mm-hmm. I've seen him in a lot of Azorius decks. I've seen him in a lot of Celestia decks. I think I'm going to take a swing at him next week. I mm -hmm. want to put him in a Bant deck because I think with the Broker's Ascendancy as well, putting the plus one, plus ones, and maybe a Kadama in there just yeah. to uh, have the modified creatures get trampled and push through the damage. And I think with adding green blue and white all together i think uh, a lot of your more targeted spells give you trample give you plus one plus one abilities yeah. um let you do the connive maybe a little bit faster i think there's a way to uh make it flow but i've seen a lot of mage craft builds with this and that's where i think the bant can make it go wide you know you, your two best creatures in mage craft are in green and white yeah and uh that's kind of why i want to take it that to that level but uh the blue works really well too man I, i've seen it just goes absolutely bonkers bro i hate <laughs> this card i hate it i hate it i hate it man. well and i'll say too what it also adds to those decks is really nice because obviously it's a threat mm -hmm. on its own right it's an early game mm -hmm. threat that double strike just means it it really really can go over the top later in the game but on top of that you're getting a lot of card selection or looting so to speak off of it with that connive ability and connive is one of those things where initially i was like eh, i mean it's good obviously it wouldn't be on a card if it wasn't good otherwise you know why create the mechanic but um i think for decks that are looking to be more early aggressive and especially with the the format right now with things like slip out the back which give you gives you the scribe but doesn't give you a draw this kind of adds that on you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. where you can scry yeah. and then make sure you're getting the card that you want um and so i i haven't played with this yet either to be honest 
my initial thought mm -hmm. was kind of a blue white azorius style you know just hit it with a bunch of little one mana spells or magecraft like you mentioned um which yeah. i have seen that deck uh played a couple times and i think it's really good it's just sick um it's one of those like you have to remove it as quickly as you can because it is so devastatingly good late game um i will say if you can get a well-timed meat hook massacre down though it's yeah. just done <laughs> but it, you have to hit it at the right time because it's so quick to to bolster up with the the connive ability yeah no me hook massacre can hit it pretty fast um as long as it's not an exile effect or the meat hook massacre with the negative negative counters uh boon of safety is one that i've seen targeting this yeah. which gives the scry ability as well um i haven't seen anybody use slip out the back with this which i think it would kind of work perfect with yeah. um but i still think having the possibility of this being a co-conspirator with your other two mage craft cards yeah you know the lion and uh the one from green i can't even think of their names right now i never play it so i yeah. do apologize to any mage craft players but um <laughs> I think it would just go ballistic. Man. I think oh, there's yeah, a possibility, sure. and, and I, you can do that in Celestia with just those two colors. But you got some really good colors in blue as well, and plus you've got you know you got your flyers that yeah. can uh, get the plus one. I saw somebody run it with Fairy Vandal, and it was just popping off. I <laughs> I, I still beat them. Yeah, but yeah. but uh, but it was really popping off and really intrigued me, man. I got to take a look at it. I can't really discuss it any more than that because I haven't no, played okay. it. But uh, it, it's been popping up in my feed all over the place, and it's just really annoying. So I think this one's going to be sticking around. Well, and I think that's uh, that and actually the card I'm going to talk about, I'll kind of segue into that. But both of these are kind of leaning the format towards more aggressive spot removal. Um because you kind of need to, if you don't answer it quickly, um, you may not have time to get to that late game sweeper. Doomscar can get there. Yeah, I mean, you can get a lucky Doomscar off or something like that. But because of that connive ability, it's pretty easy to rebuild afterwards. And so, well, and even know. Doomscar is, is, uh, is, you got the boon of safety. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. And that's so, where the deck gets built around protecting yeah. it and yeah you, know, you just have yeah. to get lucky <laughs> it's annoying it's yeah. super annoying right now this is this is the fly in my kitchen and i just can't hit it <laughs> i love it well uh to move on to uh my second card here um this is an interesting one in my opinion it's one that i did think was going to be good regardless um but it's giada font of hope i hope i'm saying giada correctly it might be I think giada. it's giada is it giada i think, it's okay. giada. I, think um, I could be wrong too Correct us Either in the way. comments section. Um, yeah. Tell us how crappy our podcast is because we don't know the names of cards. Um, no. <laughs> let's so, not. No, let's not do that. Um, so I didn't overlook this card. Let me be clear in saying when we looked through for our mm -hmm. favorite cards of the set, I I assumed that this would be a good card. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie is still in the set. We've still got a good angels list already in existence. But I've mm -hmm. noticed it's kind of fallen out of favor over the last few weeks uh, prior to Streets of New Capenna, <clears throat> just because there were, you know, a lot of ways blood on the snow deals with everything. And then you can just kind of take over slowly. There's a lot of it didn't outpace a lot of the faster just mono white lists. Um, it did have a lot of life gain, so it would get out of range pretty easily. But if you just swept one good time, I mean, you're kind of fine. Um but what this does is speed up the entirety of the deck uh, in, in a way that is, in my opinion, just very, very powerful. Having played this deck, uh, the reanimator style version as well, which I think is a whole other element to it, this is just insane. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Giada is a 2-2 for one and a white flying and vigilance. That vigilance is very important. Uh, each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. So this scales up. It also can tap for one white. You can only use that to cast an angel spell, but what else are you going to play in an angel deck? <laughs> um, it's insane to me how good this is. I mean, every time I had this on turn two, I went undefeated with the list, but every time I went on turn two, play Giada, turn three, I get a turn four play after the attack. And it gets a buff, so mm -hmm. it's not going to get hit by burn. I mean, it 
there's so much that this allows. It's such a good engine card for the deck. And yeah, it's a legendary, so you can only have one on the field. You don't need more than one, as it turns out. Um, truthfully, you could mirror box it as well and get really janky with it. But uh, I just, I really love this card. It's one that I think has ramped Angels into a potential tier one position. Um, I was uh, listening to Reed Duke uh, talk about standard rankings right now. Uh, where he kind of does his top 10 standard decks right now in the format. Uh, <clears throat> and he noted as well as I that it's early in the format. So let's be clear that things will shake up and continue to move around and that kind of stuff. But he put Angels at number five on the list. Uh, I believe it was number five. It might have been six. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, he put Angels relatively, you know, middle of the pack for tier one decks. I really think with the reanimator package available and getting this back and being able to ramp and do more and more um this is like just such a resilient deck and such a powerhouse deck right now because you can kind of ramp into the bigger angels right away um so it doesn't seem like a lot on our own i i feel i grant you that but i think with the the package that's already pre-existing it's so good yeah man i like her look it, yeah when we did our favorite picks uh this wasn't obvious for yeah. me um and i like to go outside the box and this only magnifies how far outside the box i like to go i mean i can't stop playing combos and jank for the past <laughs> week however i had this deck list that everybody's popping up with on yeah. youtube I had that built day one yeah in in my in my uh deck list on mm -hmm. arena and i just haven't got to it man i'm having too much fun with everything else <laughs> it was it was the obvious i knew yeah. it was going to be something oh, yeah. however uh, she's great she really gets it out of control um it's an easy fit uh yeah. the the deck list that i had built is the one i'm starting to see more and more of using the enchantments and stuff mm -hmm. and, as well as the angels and uh kind of feeding off of all the synergies going on and uh yeah i like it it's it's gonna make it powerful do i think it's a top five um yeah man like we've all said anybody that's played magic it's it's for for a while it meta's gotta kind of unravel still yes i don't think just a creature heavy package like everybody's wanting to drop the bombs everybody's mm -hmm. wanting to create the content everybody's having fun it's christmas that's what the first two three oh, weeks yeah. of of a new set is um but once you start throwing control in oh yeah then your creature decks have to start fine tuning and it's not fun anymore when it start you know when the meta starts taking shape and it starts becoming more competitive mm -hmm. you're you're going to start seeing these hash out do i think it stays it, it might stay in a top five but i think when you start adding in like your heavier control decks yeah. um uh like even my control deck my esper control deck right. would absolutely annihilate this deck and uh, i'm actually taking it out for a spin today because my crew <laughs> wants to see the new you know the new esper heavy control not even mm -hmm. the flyers they mm -hmm. just want a new esper control heavy and um i like her i like what she does with angels i think it was obvious um i like the build i even like the deck list and the synergies going on within it but yeah i think she's she's definitely an impact man she she's is definitely an impact. An impact. That, to your point i i wholeheartedly mm -hmm. agree i think you know, as control does start to shape the meta, as it so often does a couple weeks in, um, you will have to see, there will have to be some concessions with the Angel deck in terms of, you know, slots that are built in for recursion or slots that are built in for protection or however mm -hmm. you plan to handle that in your list. Um, what I will say is on the reanimation side of it, which builds in that recursion, um, mm -hmm. I really did enjoy the fact, because I... I in practice, at least, I know I was up against one or two control decks, and I think one happened to be an Esper control deck. Wasn't a very good one, I will say. Um, so <laughs> take that with a grain of salt, because it wasn't super great. But right. um, they did have a hand, a, a good handle on sweepers and just some spot removal with the new pieces from, from Streets of New Capenna. And so they did have some pieces that were able to kind of pick things apart and all that. Um, mm -hmm. But with that reanimation package, you've got that built-in inevitability so that even if they sweep the board one or two good times, 
you still have a way to bring back all the angels from your graveyard in one good shot. And then because there's righteous Valkyries and because there's so many other things, you gain all that life back. And then you're kind of just back in it. Now, they can uh, sweep again. So and you're talking. Uh, I'm sorry. Because um, I haven't played it. And yeah, I'm sure. guessing what it is because I've got the deck list. And I didn't mean to interrupt. But no, just for good. people who are listening that aren't uh, familiar with it, the the reanimation package you're talking about is a Haunted Voyage? Yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it's a test of talents away from being annihilated. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, come no, on. No, well, my Esper package runs one. No, just well, because and, you'll, when we talked earlier, mm -hmm. I think maybe our, maybe the second, maybe the first, I don't even remember now. It, the more you play, the more yeah. familiar you're, you're going to become with meta. And as meta takes shape, even running a one test of talents in like a hard Esper control package, you start to know what pieces of the puzzle to take yes. apart to disassemble the deck correctly. And for that, a test of talents hitting the haunted void oh, absolutely. would be a symbol correctly. And then your sweepers become more effective and you don't have to worry about yes. that. But I'm sorry, go ahead. So no, no, no I 100% agree. Pack. Um, Where I think the deck works really well also, and I'm going to shout out another card really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Cause the, the angel deck got a big buff. Let me be very clear. There are multiple cards for angels that just got ridiculously just overpowered. Another really important card, though, is Elspeth Resplendent for this yeah. deck, because that allows a it's a planeswalker axis, which the angels deck didn't necessarily have a great option for that previously. Um, mm. You could slot some stuff in, but I think it didn't synergize super well. Where Elspeth Resplendent is so good is that it allows you to rebuild so easily. And that minus three ability, which allows you to look at the top uh, seven cards of your deck and throw a permanent onto the battlefield with value three or less, yeah. that's your Righteous Valkyrie play right there. You play that, you ramp into some other stuff with the uh, Giada, and all of a sudden you're, you're golden again. You know what I mean? And so I'm not saying that the deck is perfect. I'm not even going to say it, it will land at tier one once we get a few weeks down mm -hmm. the down the line, um, because I do think you're exactly right. I think the control decks are 100% going to start stepping all over it at some point. But there are I, I think it's got the tools it finally needs to be like not just a glass cannon deck, um, which I think it was before. I think the idea was just like you throw out your righteous Valkyries and if you can get them to that threshold where everything gets buffed it's like okay well angels probably just want it um unless you could get mm. that well time sweeper but like now it feels like there are other pieces involved in the deck that kind of hit it on different axes and that way it it's not just dead to one single sweeper and you're you're done um so i don't know i mean we'll see i i think my my surprise for mm. giada giada was 100 yeah, percent yeah. at yeah how good i think i'm looking at the angel package as a whole but what she enables for the deck is so powerful in my ob in opinion knew she was going to be good i was 100 percent there didn't think angels would be quite as good as it is seeming off the face um so we'll see well yeah no and i agree man I, and i love the fact that uh it, it look if you like running tribals yeah. If you like the arc archetype, um, then it was the it was the correct it was the correct addition, and it's and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. However, keep in mind as we're you know anybody listening uh, while we're going through these cards, the meta is still taking shape, and everybody's in Ricky Bobby mode right now. I just want to go fast yeah. and want to do all the stupid stuff and everything. But when meta starts mellowing and taking shape. Um, then you know you got to start modifying your decks oh, yeah. and, and you and you got to start transitioning to to uh the format as it starts to shape you got to be able to counter counter against it and uh i like i like it i like the tribal i i've always liked the orzov angels mm -hmm. and uh she was definitely the correct addition for it i love elspeth and even her plus ability man with the four different oh, yeah, mechanics that you can select on uh depending on what you and i and i love situational cards i love yeah. cards that give me different options during situational moments because yep. that's usually where i thrive um and uh, yeah, I mean, she's a great card. She's a great addition. Top end in Orzov Angels or top end in Mono White. She's a great card. Yep, hundred percent agree. Yep. Um, all right, let's move on to your second card. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad we're not taking up nearly as much time. I know we're only at half an hour, and we normally <laughs> are like 
an hour and a half. I think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, hey, we're not done yet. <laughs> no, we're not, man. I'm actually thinking we may still stretch this by accident. <laughs> totally went into this expecting to go just fly right through it. But we really, man, this set's just wide. Oh, yeah, it's so it interesting and so fun it. right now. And it's it's the first two to three weeks and yeah. everybody's just having a blast breaking uh, the different synergies. But uh, and speaking of, here comes my number two selection. Agnes, the dragon's lash. Yes. Hey, it before is... you jump into this, I'm going to hop up for like two seconds. So you keep going. I'll be right back. Yeah, absolutely. So Agnes, the dragon's lash is one colorless. And then it's got a multitude of colors here. It's only got three more manas, but it's got the capability of you can cast it with a black or a red for one, a one red mana, and then a green or a red for the third. And it's got haste, and whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, create a tap treasure token, and it's a 3-3. So this is a Vashino Warrior, legendary creature, so you can't have multiples of them on the field unless you've got Mirror Box on there. But uh, look, the card's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of synergies. It's got a synergy with my final selection that I'm not really going to discuss yet. But the treasure token's dropping in. They do come in tapped. That's something that you do have to remember. But the possibility of this hitting with like the gold span and dragon and then uh the devilish valet you've got multiple haste creatures i mean there's frog hemoth that you could add in with this there's all in wild oddity there's just a bunch of haste creatures that you could put together with this package and then of course um all the haste creatures making the token the treasure tokens then you can top end out into like a crackle with power and if you got the dragon you know if you got gold span on the field and you got devilish valet and agnes and like a frog hemoth or an oddity making four or five treasures on one turn then you can turn around and dump just a ton of mana into like a crackle of power to finish off over the top with like a gold span on the board doubling up all your treasure tokens so this can get really out of control there's other synergies with it but I'm not really going to discuss that until I discuss my last card because that just goes super wide. So this may actually be the shortest discussion of a description of a card that I've got. <laughs> but he's got so many synergies, man. My mind is blown. I've got, I can't get away from Jund and, and Naya right now because yeah. there's just so much going on. And there's so many so many little mini combos and soft combos and or yeah. however you want to say it. But just the synergy of some of the cards that are coming out are just absolutely bonkers, man. Yeah, it really is hard to discuss a single card in the context of Streets of New Capenna because a lot of mm -hmm. times you find that, oh, well, actually, it's because it works well with these other five cards or, you know, whatever it might be. Well, and if you want, I can tie it into my other one and we can float into mine before we float into your That's last one. That's perfectly fine. I think for this, it makes so much sense. So you go because. I think your last one, the experience you had with that the other day yeah. was beautiful. It was amazing. So, so let's go <laughs> ahead and tie in Agnes so we can go with the bigger picture here. Yeah, for sure. Um, my last selection right after uh, Agnes would be Jenny Faye Bay. It's Jenny Faye Jetmere second, but she has literally become my Bay. I think that's a, ter <laughs> I think that's a term the kids use nowadays. Wow, you're pretty so old. I hope I'm using it right, man. I hope I'm using it right. I hope I didn't just step it. all over this podcast. No, nah, dude, okay. you nailed it. We're going to get <laughs> so, so much hate for it, but it's fine. Oh, that's shit. all right. <laughs> so, look, I have absolutely fallen in love with this card at a level of, like, Scoot Swarm love. Wow. And I love Scoot. Uh, but there's an interaction there that I you can't – they don't work very well together. Scoot mm -hmm. and Jenny Faye don't. So you got Jenny Faye, uh, Jetmere second. You can cast for a red green in one mana, a mono green for the second, and then its third is a green or a white. So it's only three casting costs, but you can use those color combinations. And it's a 3-3. Three, three. She's a legendary creature, Elf Druid. And if you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens with haste or that many 3-1 green dog creature tokens with vigilance. Look, if you're needing big blockers, you just go with the dogs. But if you're running this in a package with, like, uh, Agnes, then any creature that has haste attacks in and creates a treasure token 
And if you create any tokens, you're creating more creatures with haste. <laughs> <laughs> so the the board state just goes, I've played them together. Man. Yeah. The board state goes absolutely ballistic. And and you can put in um the only reason they come the only reason it doesn't work super well with I mean it does work super well with Agnes, but the only downside to it is Agnes's uh treasure tokens come in tap. So yeah. all your two two uh green creature cats are coming in tap. Then that's why I said if you need blockers, make your three one dogs. Um but if you drop in a chariot, your two cats are now two cats with haste. Mm-hmm. And you can uh, automatically set them off to attack with your Agnes creating three more cats <laughs> Jenny's on the board and and then it also fits in a package where you can put meat hook in just as a finisher as well mm-hmm. um so i did play it with scoot uh the scoot triggers are cool because you're then your one ones are now two two cats or your three ones however they're not scoots anymore yeah so you're not getting the big multipliers off of scoots so i think running this is maybe a one of or a two of in a scoot package and letting your you'd have to know when the correct time is to put her into play mm-hmm. and that would be like after you've got five to ten scoots on the board you know and you're gonna still drop in a ton of these tokens yeah. and then you get the multipliers but you want your scoots to have multipliers if you utilize it with this if not uh jenny Fay is actually Actually counteracting well, the uh the the flex of scoot correct me if i'm wrong though jenny fey is a may ability right you don't have to replace oh no no it's is it if you ac- i'm reading it oh, so if you create one or more tokens you may instead create that many i gotta get back in game man because i don't I don't think there was a no God. I I've don't know because I haven't played with Jenny Fay. She's I've only one that I knew this was like gonna a be million good, times but... over the past few days. <laughs> I don't know that there if that is the case. Yeah. Absolutely busted. Oh, for sure. Absolutely bust. Man, yeah, yeah. my mind's blown. I'm just gonna go wreck shop right now. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. <laughs> He's gonna finish up the podcast. Yeah, exactly. For us. I got you. <laughs> so no. Yeah, but, no, I I mean, it says May, but if it when doesn't it, give you the option. When it pops up, all it pops up is the cat or dog. I don't I don't remember seeing an exit ability. Okay. Uh, maybe if, maybe it's in the right-hand corner in my tunnel vision. My tunnel vision is real, <laughs> guys, so don't take my word at it. All I got to do is go watch today's video, and I could tell you right away, but I'm not going to during the podcast. Oh, my God. If, that, if my tunnel vision locked me out of that, yeah. I'm going to be so mad. No, because now you can do broken things with it. Yeah, Jenny Faye, though, I mean, I'm with you on Jenny Faye 100%. I thought Mm -hmm. this was going to be good because we've got so many great token decks right now and, like, token generators. They're everywhere. I'll be honest. um, The other one, was it Ogden? Agnes. Agnes, thank you. Um, Agnes was the one that I actually looked over out of these two solely because um, I thought the fact that the creatures having to have haste was going to be too restricting um mm-hmm. and i wasn't thinking about the two in tandem so i wasn't i wasn't thinking you run them in the same deck just because i didn't piece the two together quite yet um i get why they're good in tandem 100 percent, and i do understand why agnes is good in general because there are some really good hasty things i mean we talked about the devilish valet there's ura brass well, there's all kinds of good stuff but and you attack him with the devilish valet with haste those tokens get created right there yeah your creatures get dropped Yes. And Devilish Valet just gets pumped. Yeah. Sky high. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So it, yeah, it just gets. But yeah, I mean, I, I love both of these cards quite a bit. I have, I'll be as of, as of the time of recording this, I have not played a tokens list. Truly. I've played a scoot swarm list, but I haven't played a true, like all in tokens list. Scoot swarm mm-hmm. is going to be more of like a, on my Simic ramp deck, I mean, come on, I gotta have a Scoot Swarm. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I haven't gone full-fledged tokens quite yet, and yep. it's one of the decks that I'm most excited to try, but I'm afraid if I do try it, I won't play any other decks because I love it's, tokens. They're just so fun. fun. It's so addicting, man. Yeah, so I, I feel bad for my viewers because my content, it's not still to me because I get to play it. <laughs> 
but all week it's been it went naya tokens and yeah. then it went bouncy house and now it's jund combo tokens yeah. and i mean i can't get away from it dude there's just so much fun to be had in yeah, so many different sure. ways to synergize it um and like i said i'll look at that may ability oh my god if that's the case she's going back in the deck because i, I actually say, yeah. took her, i actually took her out at the end of this last video that came out today because my tunnel vision obviously wasn't wasn't letting me see that it was a May effect. Um, I'll have to look again. I'll have to look again. <laughs> yeah, definitely because... double check because I mean it reads that way, but I don't know for sure if that's you know. There's always little tricks of the the text and stuff like that, so I, I don't know yeah. for sure that that's how it would work. Well, and then just the token generators in general, the overall picture with like her and Agnes. And then if you get a gold span in, drop it another one. And then mm -hmm. if you've got valet in and you're making all this stuff kick off, the one thing that I haven't tried yet that I actually have to is her namesake. I got to put her in with Jetbeer. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to. Going to have to try it. Yeah. Got to got to man <laughs> but yeah man i've actually i've just fallen so in love with this uh this yeah, card yeah. man i think it's been in two of my last three videos and i gotta pull away from it a little bit but that's the same thing that happens with scoot i try yeah. and build a deck and i want the jank and scoot just Scoot's makes jank so, so good fun at jank. <laughs> it's so fun bro it's yeah, so dude. fun I'm, I'm gonna be upset you. when he rotates Sad. i yeah i'm gonna miss scoot swarm a lot i might start playing historic just to just to pull it in <laughs> Um, right on nah. but yeah that's my final two but uh, it's yeah, all yours that was awesome. man i no. just I, I do apologize for the long tie-in on that one no, but that yeah if great. you got anything yeah. else um, so then i i don't yeah. have anything else on the two that you mentioned um i do mm -hmm. agree they're both phenomenal cards and i definitely slept on agnes so i'm i'm hoping to get my hands on that and try that out but uh i'll i'll lead into my last one yeah uh <laughs> it was a good showing bro it was yeah great. so yeah. here's the thing guys this was on my list as one of the most exciting cards i didn't think it would be that good i thought it would be jank city like a hundred percent it turns out it's like an enabler for a number of different control lists uh a number of different versions of the same basic control list but uh arcane bombardment guys is pretty good <laughs> um yeah, so it's four and two red enchantment when you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard then copy each card exiled with arcane bombardment you can cast any number of copies without paying their mana cost so this only happens once each turn but the idea is it stacks every turn um and you essentially run this the main package i will say because uh, you can run a couple of varieties, a couple of different color patterns, things like that. But the main ver version of this list runs things like Play With Fire, uh, Igneous in Inspiration, I believe is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, big Score, a lot of things that you can do at to either burn the opponent or generate a lot of value on your end. Um, so magma and then Opus. Magma Opus is the big one. Uh, creative Outburst is the other, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you create those treasure tokens to get Magma Opus and Creative Outburst in the graveyard. You ramp into your Arcane Bombardment and you hit like a Play With Fire, or some really cheap burn spell that hits the opponent. And now all of a sudden you pull a Magma Opus for basically one mana. Um, <laughs> and it's repeated. So if you do that again on the next turn, you just get to do the Play With Fire plus a Magma Opus plus whatever card you played plus another card. <laughs> Um, and so it's like a scalable effect and it, it wins games so quickly. It is ridiculous. Um, I a hundred percent thought this would be a jank card. Turns out there are multiple different people running different versions. Uh, there's a, an, is it version that day nine has been running day nine is one of my favorite streamers. Absolute blast to watch. Um, his deck is very, very good. The version I ran, I forgot who it was. I think it was MTG Malone created the list i think so um i might be wrong but it is up on the channel you guys can go watch it but it was a maestros or grixis version of the deck and so it ran a little bit of discard as well which is so ridiculous like in theory the idea of being able to discard your opponent multiple times to the point where they just don't get anything <laughs> is ridiculous um it was a blast absolutely love this card uh it 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 met my expectations of jank and then decided, nah, that's not good enough. We're going to be an actual good deck. And I'm like, all right, sick. I'm in. It's so good.
Yeah, no, it really is, man. Now, look, the control side of me says if I'm running a control deck, it's a negate. Yeah. Um, however, this hits the board. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is, is it can run negate too? Is it can run test the talents as well? Yep. Uh, I don't think we've seen this in its final form yet. I think we've seen it in its potential really throttled form yeah. of just lean forward i don't think we've seen it in its fullest uh its fullest maximum potential i think this one's going to be a thing i, I yeah. think your selection ended up being a thing i love the artwork i love yeah, the little beautiful. illusionary doctor strange hands <laughs> going on but uh look i've seen it run i saw your video it went absolutely ballistic i do believe it was mtg malone because after i watched yours i think i went and watched it mm-hmm. and then i've actually ran into this um, creature decks are going to have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> creature decks are going to have a problem with this one. Yeah. Um, it just works really well, man. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, man, I can't <laughs> believe how fun and how effective this card turned out. I it just didn't uh, think it would be viable. Cause I mean, it's a six mana thing and a color combination that generally runs it is going to have to ramp via treasures. And so there's that, like, yeah. you really have to build into it and then it has to stay on the field and then you have to trigger it for a number of turns. But because mm-hmm. it kind of exponentially grows in the initial factor, like it just goes off so quickly. It's like, I I mean, in those games, in the video that I create, I put out on the deck, like I had somebody remove one of the arcane bombardments, but it just didn't matter. Like I had already yeah. gained so much value off of it that, it was fine and like just doesn't matter you just get to continue doing your thing and so i i don't know man this i i think you're well, right i think we're not seeing the final form quite yet but we're getting there yeah it's good it's, it's going fast man somebody broke their brain yeah. somebody broke their brain putting this to, they saw this card they heard our podcast they listened to you and then they broke <laughs> their brain no i've kid i don't know i mean everybody anybody that plays magic goes and looks at the list and they want to come up with the cards and they want to see what's going on what the potential is there and everybody wants to unlock the matrix yep. if you're the one that makes the deck the new deck that's viable it's just cool it's cool yeah. i've done you know i did it back before it was all over the computer and stuff just for my local area and it was just awesome because everybody knew i had created the deck that was running top meta at the shop on fnms yep. the one thing that i did not expect in this was the flexibility of how well it can take care of the board state because yeah. i threw down a titan of industry and I threw down uh, the shield counter on it. I'm like, ha ha, you know, I got you. Did not expect galvanic iteration, galvanic iteration, burn down the house. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of insane. Yeah, like that's the thing is burn down the house is one of the best cards with this because yeah. you repeatedly get to sweep the board or deploy threats. So it's like no matter what the situation from that point on, you've got the answer ready to go. And so I with Galvanic iteration, I mean, that's, that's insane. Well, and you've also got cheap spells that can remove it too. The shield counter off of Titan of Industry, yeah, oh yeah. for instance, is what I was, uh, the, the spike filled hazard can yeah, you just uh, ping reach it out and one just and... tap it. And then you just Galvanic and burn down the house. Look, it's got so much. And then Galvanic and, you know, if, I don't I don't know that I've seen anybody run big score with this yet. It makes uh, sense. I think I've just seen I think I've just seen the magma opuses mm-hmm. with the uh, token ramp into it and stuff like that. And I, I I still have yet to see a gold span with this thing. I honestly don't running, think you need it. It's just running spellbook. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's it's just, my thing it's just because, running a spellbook, like, no creatures, and you're still gonna die. Well, and the big score is so good with this because in that transaction you Mm -hmm. don't have to like you end up doubling up on the big score so you're getting extra treasure every turn and getting extra card draw every turn and so Mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up to continuously have spells to continuously trigger the arcane bombardment on both your turn and your opponent's turn because so much of the deck is instant speed anyway and so you get the treasure token which will allow you to cast something on your opponent's turn go through all your spells once again Uh, adding two more to it essentially and so you're just building 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 and like it gets to the point where it's just like 
I mean, you can't outpace it once it gets going. It takes a while. No, you really can't. No, well, and I even conceded the game that I was in with it because it's just like there was no point. Man. It's literally almost like a mono red leer. Yeah. Except your cards aren't getting exiled once you recast them. No, no. You just get it's to just cast ridiculous. Them again and again. <laughs> it's just for free. For yeah, free. for free. Yeah. Because why not? Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely ridiculous, man. I love the potential of it. I, I loved the video that you had out of it and Thanks, the fact man. that you went 3-0 and on it and yeah. then even MTG Malone's and everybody playing it. Man. Such an interesting card and such an unusual way to break magic. I love it. It just kind of shows the flexibility of where we're at and what yeah. we haven't learned yet because everybody's kind of going creature synergy. I know I am. Mm -hmm. Everybody's kind of going creature synergy heavy and interactions and all that. And then out of the blue, oh, well, hey, I'm not going to run any creatures. I'm going to run just my spell book, and yep. I'm going to Scarlet Witch your ass. So Well, and that's the thing, be... too, is something that's really important to note about this is it kind of devalues a lot of the decks right now because so many of them are running sweepers. They're running Blood on the Snow to reanimate stuff and all that, mm -hmm. and they just don't have targets. Like, unless yeah. they're the little 1-1 one -one devils. And like that feels terrible to blood on the snow for three one one devils that are gonna ping you for a damage anyway. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's it's interesting. Um, I've really enjoyed this deck. I I do want to try some different iterations. I even wanted to. I even thought about doing like a rampy version in green, mm -hmm. where yeah. you pull a, like a lot of ramp spells to deck thin yourself to the point where you just only have non land cards in your deck, and then you just continuously kind of go off from there. But, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it would work in a teamer. Yeah, it's, that's kind of my topi thought. Your, your topiary stomper would mm -hmm. pull the land fix that you need for it. I do, I do, I love the way you thought on that, uh, or you're, the way you're going with that thinking on that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I do think it's got, if, if this thing ends up being any faster, mm -hmm. it's going to reach top five meta. Oh, easy. Because people are going to play control, wanting to control the board state and all that kind of stuff. And this is going to be out of touch. Yep. It's going to be out of their reach. Yep. And it's just, you know, you better have every counter spell you can possibly think of. In or your I will say one bad matchup generally is Orzov because they have Vanishing Verse and they just mm -hmm. exile this. There are a couple things that yeah. in the meta that deal with it fairly easily. Um but they're few and far between because so many people are either trying something new or, as you said, going in a different direction that really doesn't doesn't interact well with it. So it's it's a it's a powerful thing right now. I do think it's going to hit pretty, pretty heavy here soon uh, when we get a, a refined deck list together, because um, I think we're getting close anyway. But I uh, I don't know. I'm curious. I think this is going to be one that the meta has to react to in a very meaningful way. I don't know. We did. We did. We discussed it on our live stream the other night amongst the community. I think it ends up settling into an is it list. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody can find a teamer list to make it a little bit faster, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. But I think it settles into an is it list. I think it starts. I think you got to find some flex cards. I think you're going to have to do some test of talents or negates or, or saw it comings or dissipates, whatever you want. Um, because it's going to have to find a way to answer like the vanishing verses yeah. or, or the Titan of industry coming in and just killing off your enchantment, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, man, I think there's, I think, I think, I would say maybe is it, but I've been wrong with everything I've been saying. Man. You hit this one. You hit this one out of the park, dude. The, this yeah, selection this is a lucky yours, one. Well, it may have been a lucky one, and and you even explained it. You thought it was just going to be jank and fun, oh, but yeah. damn it, the viability didn't pop I up know, like a steroid. Man. That thing just—it's been flexing all over the place. Man. Yeah, this card came out of the pack and hit the gym. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I love this card, guys. It's a blast. I think you should absolutely play it if you haven't, because it's going to need to get played at some point by you, because if you're trying to be involved in standard in any meaningful way, I think this is the card to try. But that's just me. I think this card yeah. is stupid. No, I mean, yeah, no, you said it. If you're going to if you're going to if you're going to play magic and if you're going to try it at all competitive, yeah. you got to know the scope. Yep of at least the meta when the meta finally gets fine-tuned and everything mm -hmm. at least that but 
the wider you know when you start running into those off the wall brews and stuff then you kind of know where they're going with it and you might know or you might pick up on what they're getting ready to try and pop off and do yeah. however yeah if you're playing creature synergies and stuff like i am this thing will come out from the shadows and just smack you right in the back of the head <laughs> it really will man it really yeah, will it's it's crazy if you're not expecting yeah. like if you don't know the meta this is going to be a backbreaking card for you i'm very sorry to say but uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah what do you do about it what yeah do do? exactly um well guys that concludes our list of uh our top surprising cards of the new set um some of these were more surprising than others for sure but i do think you know, they're all very reasonable picks in my view um, for cards that either we thought were going to be good, but not necessarily quite as good as they were, or in Arcane Bombardment, Bombardment's case, I just thought it was going to be complete jank, and here it is. So regardless, an absolutely blast of a set right now. I'm really loving the new set, um, and I know you are as well, so it's a, oh, it's yeah. a blast. Yeah, absolutely, man. I can't even handle it. Like I said, uh, I didn't think it was as powerful as Neon Dynasty. However, we're seeing a lot of powerful cards take shape, like the Arcane Bombardment. Mm -hmm. um, but I was right in my other statement. It's just as wide, folks. Oh, yeah. There are about 100 different things you could go build right now today, yep. and you'll have 100 more tomorrow. Yep. It's a super flexible format. We talked a lot about that the last episode that... You know, we are going to see a lot of different things. And to the point that we, I think, have kind of touched around a lot this episode is that you're seeing a lot of different versions of the same basic deck. So Arcane Bombardment, as an example, there is an Is It build for it. There, There's a Grixis build for it or a Maestros build for it, whatever it is. But there's a lot of different ways you can play the same basic package. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see how some of these land and which one ends up being the better one. Do they shift based on meta, like all those things? And um, it's mm. going to be an interesting an interesting season, I think, for sure, with all the uh, the flexibility that we have. Yeah, man, it's so fluid right now. There's no even there's no telling somebody somebody like you've mentioned before his name, Reed Duke, mm -hmm. somebody like Reed Duke. If Reed decides to go competitive standard, I guarantee you he's brewing something that you haven't seen yet and yeah. he won't play it on any of us. He may play other stuff and keep you interested. But if he's going to take something to a tournament, uh, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And you won't be prepared. No. And I think that's such a big piece of being a pro player and at that yeah. level of thinking. And it's that's something that as uh, small time content creators will say we always try to aspire to be is is that flexible and that that uh, on top of everything. Creative. We'll yeah, yeah, just. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's unbelievable how some of their minds work. That's why I say competitive is a scene. It is yeah. a scene. Oh, yeah. I'm a brewer. Yeah, I'm a brewer. I don't think my brain could handle the level of competitiveness that those guys go into, man. But I'm I'd, not super competitive. I like to play decks and I like to have the ranked aspect in the videos. But like, mm -hmm. honestly, I'm less of a player and much more of a collector. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, <laughs> it is. Guys, enjoy this new set with the release and everything. If you're a brewer at all, competitive or not, you're in Christmas mode right now. Because yeah. we are so wide. There's so much to do. So many things to try out. Go break it. Yes. Go find it. Go break it. Well, with that, uh, we do come to the end of the episode where we have established that we generally like to say a little thing about something non-magic related. We kind of messed that up in the mm -hmm. last episode where we were talking <laughs> magic. But uh, is there anything that uh, you want to you wanna end on this week? Uh, real quick, just to touch on, on the one. Uh, well, okay, so my wife and daughter went to KU so mm -hmm. she could do a campus tour. So daughter brought me back a shirt. Yes. I love it. The one thing that I did want to touch on, though, that was a little more serious this past week. Uh, we did have a tornado touchdown mm -hmm. in my area. It was it was about five miles east of the house. Look, uh, I know it's Kansas. Everybody thinks <laughs> Wizards of Oz. We don't get that many folks. Oklahoma <laughs> and Texas get more than we do on an annual basis here lately. However, it was scary. It did hit one of our friends' house. We have another friend that lived about just like a mile from there as well. Uh, luckily, all friends and family are safe. There were no fatalities reported. Uh, a lot of structural damage and all that. Uh, just 
you know, tis the season, spring, listen to your weather reports. If this is a thing for you or if you're in a zone that that could be an option, uh, you know, take safety when the, take safety when they tell you to take safety. That's the yeah. only the reason that uh, my friend, his wife, and his son are even safe is they went down in their shelter. And uh, it went right over the top of their house and put a tree into their roof. So, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, wow. definitely, definitely listen to your weather reports and all that. And that's just... It's outside of magic. Yeah, it hit really yeah, yeah. close to home. I don't like going that deep with things. I usually like to try and keep it light, but it is the season. My community sees it. I yeah. post on it. Uh, there's times where I can't stream because there's just too much lightning going on, and I don't want to risk the equipment. And mm-hmm. I mean, or we, you know, have tornado sirens going off, and I don't <laughs> want to risk my body. So, no, <laughs> so yes, that's more but important. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I I think uh, no, that's very fair to point out, and, and it is a, an important thing to stay safe during this time. So I'm really happy that everybody uh, ended up safe despite having that structural damage. So I hate that for them, but at least they're not yeah. hurt. That's good. Absolutely, absolutely, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah, we're yeah. doing we're doing plenty of recovery stuff for them. It was them getting through it safe, and I appreciate it. And yeah, yeah. Good, everybody's good. good. Fantastic. Up on it. Um. Well, I. I'll touch on a couple things. We're recording on Cinco de Mayo, which is not really my favorite thing, but happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Um, It's also my wife's birthday on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, And so we're going to go out and do the whole Mexican restaurant thing and have a blast. There's one very nearby. Uh, So happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody and happy birthday to my lady friend. there you go. Um, yeah, I will so happy also... birthday to your wife. Yeah, dude. She's, <laughs> uh, she's 28, man. We're getting up there. We're almost 30. Awesome. Um, so we, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you laugh. Um, we actually, for her Christmas present, though, uh, mm-hmm. we, I, I got us tickets. She's always wanted to see Jimmy Buffett. Um, she used to go with her dad or listen with her dad all the time, but her dad was very safety conscious and was like, Hey, there's like a ton of drunk people and like all this stuff. So mm-hmm. growing up, he was like, we're not going to go to a Jimmy Buffett concert. Um, but that's always been kind of a bucket list item for her. And so over Christmas, that was my gift was my big gift was we, we got Jimmy Buffett tickets. And so we were able to go this past weekend in Charlotte, um, and, man what a blast we just had such a good time she was in just like this state of you know surrealism kind of going on because we were just she had been wanting to go for so long and so uh it was a really special thing to be able to take her we're very fortunate for that and uh it was a blast dude jimmy buffett at 75 is still rocking it man he's killing it i'm not even a huge jimmy buffett fan i'll just be honest but it was a really fun show um there were a lot of really gone people there it was hilarious you should try you should definitely try dave matthews band sometime (laughs) but uh no i get the euphoria of it and that's cool for her just because i understand what you're saying Mm -hmm. of it uh because i grew up skateboarding uh in the in the late 80s early 90s and red hot chili peppers before they were even ever a thing yeah and uh, we finally got to see them man and i was just and fleas older than me and if i had an <laughs> ounce of that dude's energy <laughs> man, uh he just from start to go but i get it you, you just to see it live man if you haven't ever been to a concert i'm not a huge fan of the crowds and stuff like that no. i can't really do it much um but uh if you get the right band that you've been latched on to or the right person definitely give it a shot man it's yeah. completely it's a completely different type of entertainment it is. It's a it's an absolute blast. And I I tend to lean into a different style of music. So I've I've had that experience elsewhere. And um, I grew up going to Warp Tour and all that stuff. And so, you know, that was that was a fun time. But I grew up playing shows as well. And so I had the other opportunity of being on the stage. And that was really fun. Um, oh, I bet. Nothing beats that. Um, I bet. But playing drums up on stage, man. Uh, something about that's a blast. I couldn't do anything on stage, man. <laughs> I couldn't do, I, you don't want me to try and sing. <laughs> don't want me to do it. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get you singing one day. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I will I will end with this. I'm going to tease a little bit for anybody listening, um, and I'm not saying anything too crazy, so do not stress, because I know you're, you're in your head. You're like, don't say it. Um, no, no, I could do it. 
if I was stressed, you would know. Yeah. And uh, I completely trust you. So, well, all I'm going to say is if you are listening up until this point, <clears throat> uh, first of all, thank you so much for being a supporter of the podcast. This has been an absolute blast to be able to do with a fantastic friend, a great content creator. This has been really, really special. We, this isn't the end of the glorious sun. I, I realize I'm setting it up to make it sound like it's the end. Now of it. we're, this is the finale. Guys. The, we did this it. The, uh, we did the Seinfeld. I hope we're you just dropping it. it. Yeah, we're just dropping <laughs> it. Um, next episode, mm -hmm. we are going to have some really, really, really big news at the beginning of the episode. We're going to try and push that towards the beginning to, to make sure people understand what's going on. There's some really awesome stuff coming up uh, that does involve collaboration between the two of us. Um, we're going to talk more in depth about what that means and all the details of all that kind of stuff on the next episode. Uh, we are working on getting some things together now, but all of that is all, all details will be released at that point. So I want you guys to pay attention in the next episode because some really, really big news is coming uh, and I couldn't be more excited about it. I think this is, this is going to be an absolute blast. Yeah, man. Yeah. I can't say anything. No, I'll, I know. It's, I'm really. I'll spill it all, <laughs> man. I will. I'm so excited that I almost want to spill it all. I but know. I really time. want to. But... Um, yeah. Yeah. Just check out the next episode. Yeah. It'll it's going to be, gonna be uh, it's definitely going to be interesting for the better. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so guys, with that, we are going to end episode three of the podcast. I do appreciate again, everybody listening and everybody watching. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. This is a really new experience for the both of us to work together on this kind of thing. And so, um, to, to have it have listeners <laughs> at all, is pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, but it, it, it seems like at the very least you guys are really enjoying it. So, uh, if you do have any suggestions, any comments, anything like that, leave them in a uh, comment section, wherever you happen to be listening um or watching and thank you guys so much i hope you have a glorious day we're gonna get out of here we'll see you later peace always saying peace man <laughs> i love the peace man